Toasters, communication, or the lack thereof, is the most consequential, the most powerful tool or skill we can have, we can possess as a community, as a society, in relationships, and as beings. Communication is key. It's the most important tool and skill we can have or allow to escape us. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. Toast to the men. Posters, as you come in, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and share the content. When this video ends, go to toasttothemen.com and see what we have to offer. Toasters, communication is the number one reason any of my relationships didn't work, didn't survive, or did work, did thrive. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. It was communication. Whether it thrived or failed, it was communication or the lack of communication being the reason it failed or thrived. And a lot of times when we communicate, man, we don't communicate properly because we're not communicating in a way that's loving. That's the first thing, man. The foundation has to be loving. You have to come from a place of love and patience. God is love. So that needs to be in your mind frame and your spirit that God is love. And so I'm going to come to my brother, to my sister, to my friend, my spouse, my sibling, the stranger, this co-worker, in love. Because I want to exude, I want to project God. I want to project that light. And so I'm going to let the foundation be love. That's the first thing that has to happen when communicating. Communication, as we know, uh, has two main parts, but I want to dive deeper. You know, we know listening and speaking. And what's not talked about a lot is we can do both, one and the same. We can listen and speak without communicating verbally. We can speak and listen without ceasing to communicate verbally, paying attention, being engaged, being in tune, paying attention, making eye contact. I know some societies uh, frown upon that, but in the U.S., we make eye contact, we're engaged. We look eye to eye to show that we're engaged. It's a sign of respect and paying attention mannerisms. When a person sees that you're locked in, that's important. Whether they realize it or not, that's important. When you're locked in, when they have your full attention, that's important. Sign of respect. But if you're going through your phone, if you're rolling your eyes, if you're preoccupied or occupied, distracted with something else other than listening to that person, you've already failed in communicating. If you're listening with the intent of responding and without the intent of understanding, with all thy getting, get an understanding, your first intent should be, I want to understand this person. I'm not concerned about having a rebuttal I truly want to understand this person's feelings, their pain, their perspective. I truly want to understand. And so I'm not in a rush or I'm not even thinking about responding. Now I'm talking about the skills we should have. I don't bat a thousand at this. I don't. Uh, I consider myself a, a pretty good communicator, pretty good listener. Uh, but I will say I have a habit of cutting you off if 
you start saying some truth or reflecting or reciting some things that did not happen. And I feel it's not true. And I'll, I'll stop you right there and correct you and then allow you to proceed. And I thought about that. I was like, man, and it really deep in down, deep down is ego because, you know, I, I say I do it because I want the facts to be the facts. And if I allow a person to, to proceed without correcting them, stopping it right there and correcting them, that becomes fact. That falsehood or the mis uh, misinterpretation becomes fact. Or I might forget to go back and correct you, you know, if I allow you to proceed. And so, uh, but I think a lot of it is rooted in ego, though. It's rooted in ego. Um, and so, you know, that can that can cause a disconnect, even when I'm doing that. It may seem like it's justified, logical, but, you know, that can cause a disruption in communication, right? But the first thing we, we got to do in communicating, man, we got to communicate with ourselves properly. However we communicate with others is how we treat ourselves. If we're impatient with ourselves, we're impatient with others. If we don't take the time to listen to our subconscious, listen to our body, listen really, you know, being able to be still and listen to things around us, being patient, being loving, being caring, attentive to ourselves. We can't give that to others. And most of us are impatient with ourselves. We don't treat ourselves properly. We don't listen to our bodies. We don't listen to our subconscious, our higher selves. We're, we're totally disconnected. And so how can we actually communicate properly with someone else? It's just impossible. And if you notice, every community, every race, every ethnicity has a subculture, a sub-community that has problems communicating. Yes, blacks have this subculture, whites, Asians, Hispanics, uh, we can go on and on, Hawaiians, uh, whatever you want to name, we can go on and on. Everybody has this subculture that has a problem communicating and it usually ends up in a lot of jail time a lot of deaths uh, a lot of toxicity in these subcultures these sub communities but the culture or the community that is able to properly communicate with themselves that go to the doctor properly that eat properly that meditate that know how to talk to themselves love themselves they project that out to others. And these are the people that are winning. Plain and simple. These are the people that, that are winning. Even in these subcultures, you have a few people that know how to communicate properly. Those people are winning. Those people are winning. You can have guys, and you may even wonder this, like, this guy or this gal is, is wealthy. They have all these businesses. They're doing well. But they still are doing business in the so-called hood or within these subcultures. They're still greatly connected to these subcultures and doing good business within these communities. And that's because they, I want to say exploiting but they know <laughs> that communication is key. Communication is king. Communication rules the nation. So whoever can communicate properly is always going to lead, is always going to win. And you can take full advantage or exploit or capitalize. We'll say that capitalize off of situations where people do not communicate well. Man, look at the, the movie, The Book of Eli. You know, uh, the one person that was in that gang in the in the in the part of the bad guys, so to speak, the leader 
of, of the gang of the, the you know the bad group in the book of Eli the one person who was leading these guys he was the great communicator amongst these people he was the one that could read that could reason he was the one that therefore he became the leader now as the you know the movie goes on we find out the book that they were searching for was in braille but you know but as far as leading those people he was the one who was the great communicator and so he was the leader he capitalized off of that he exploited that and that's just what it is you can't get ahead you can't reach your full potential if you cannot communicate properly you, you just can't and the thing is we like to point the finger or play the victim and say it's the other person that doesn't listen is the other person that talks too much is the other person that goes on and on but we have to self-reflect we have to be accountable and we have to take ownership in communicating both of us both parties groups communities people have to take ownership and say what can i do what can i do to communicate better i need to stop shutting down I need to listen from a place of love. I need to be more direct and precise in my delivery when I speak. A lot of people won't admit that. A lot of people won't admit that they are not direct, precise, articulate in their delivery. They just want. Uh, they expect you to listen even if they're going on and on and all over the place. They expect you to listen. Both people have to be accountable because it's a test. It's a lesson that can be learned from both people. Even if the person is not precise and direct in their, their delivery with speech, that's a challenge for me. That's an opportunity for me to grow, to be more patient. If the person on the other end is fidgeting, they have a hard time or a challenging time listening, they're all over the place. That's an opportunity for the speaker to up their skills in delivering speech, being more verbal, being more direct, more precise, getting attention through their speech. That's an opportunity to learn. But what we like to do, we like to point the finger and have no accountability amongst ourselves and say, I need to do this better. Right. Now, the easy way out is to say, well, I'm not going to deal with these type of people. But let me tell you, man, that lesson, that test is not going anywhere. You still got to pass that test. You still have to gather that lesson, obtain that lesson, acquire that lesson. You have to. Because that same problem, that same challenge, that same person or group will appear in your life until you work on you. Period. And listen, man, I've been guilty of it. I've been guilty of it, uh, pointing the finger and blaming others about how they communicate. But I needed to take a challenge. I needed to take it as a personal challenge to better myself in my listening and my delivery. If both people, if both groups and communities do that, man, we will go so far as a society. We will go so far. Anytime you see uh, an officer, a police officer, get into it with a patron or, or a civilian or, or you know whoever, uh, most times, I believe 99.9% .9 of the time, there's a failure to communicate from both ends. Whether that's verbal, subliminal, nonverbal, uh, there's a there's a uh, energy wise vibration wise there's a failure to communicate from both ends both people both parties have failed to be accountable or failed to grow in 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 the uh, aspect of communication I guarantee it with divorce separation of any kind with a business partner a uh, romantic partner you know, kids, parents, there's always a failure to communicate. And if both people, 
both parties just take the opportunity to reflect and be accountable and say, I need to be better in this. This is a personal challenge and, and just take it as a positive. Like, man, I get, I get the opportunity to challenge myself. I get the opportunity to be a better listener, a better speaker. Take it as a personal challenge, as a positive challenge. I was talking to uh, a couple this weekend. I was at one of my spots, The Loom. Man, if you're in Uptown, check out The Loom, man. That that bar or, or restaurant slash restaurant has been around for years and years. Cool, cool bar, man. I'm usually outside on the patio smoking a cigar, maybe having a drink, eating. The food is, is great. But uh, I sparked up a conversation with this couple, this married couple. And I actually, I take that back. <laughs> they were not married. They've been together 12 years, have a 10-year-old son, but they're not married. And that's part of the issue, too, with, with her. Uh, but in the conversation, man, it got deep. And they shared a lot with me. And the woman was shocked that the brother was sharing so much with me that she was offended. Like, why are you sharing so much with this dude you just met? Uh, but I can't get you to communicate with me. And uh, he didn't answer her. But I can only, only suspect or assume it's because I didn't come at him in a contentious way. He and I don't have a history, right? So I was just there to listen. I was listening. And I was asking follow-up questions on things he said. But for the most part, I was listening. But there was so much contention, so much uh, so much hurt and pain that had happened within the relationship through the 12 years that it caused some disconnect in the communication. And uh, actually, they say they want to come on the show. And so we're going to make that happen. Uh, yeah, they 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 a uh, beautiful couple though. But he had cheated. He had cheated in the very beginning of the relationship. This was twelve years ago. Now her take on this, her perspective was, she had dealt with all these ballers, millionaires, ball players, a uh, hedge fund manager, and. She gave him an opportunity because although he had, you know, a moderate amount of paper, he wasn't on that level. So I think she believed she downgraded, you know, in that aspect. And she was able to give him an opportunity. And she said she felt like they were friends and she was honest with them about everything because she has a checker pass and she was a hustler. But she was honest. She was transparent. And she thought that's what she was getting from him. But to come find out, he had another woman he had been dealing with before he got with her, and he never shared that with her, never broke it off with this other woman. He ended up getting busted. Not only that, you know, he said he broke it up, broken it off, ended up getting busted two more times. This is with all in the first year. And she couldn't get over it. Now, she admitted after that, the next 11 years, there's been no question about if he's been faithful, nothing's happened, but it does bother her that the temptation is there. And this brother was a real brother, man, transparent. He's like, the temptation might be all, might always be there. He said, but I won't act on it. And I thought that was honest. You know, that was honest, uh, honest response. But her thing was, she just could not get over it. And I asked her, I said, which, I said, well, no, first I said, why does this bother you so much after 12 years? Why is this so fresh, it seems? And she said, honestly, I'm telling you, this was a beautiful couple, man. They were transparent. She said, honestly, it's ego. I said, wow, that's interesting. She said, honestly, my perspective on this, my, my, my stance on this is, I dare you. I dare you cheat on me. 
Not only do I dare that you cheat on me, that I dare that you cheat on me for that. Ego. Ego. And that's the number one thing that prevents us from communicating properly. Ego. Ego. Uh, and that brother said he carried that, that woman over into the new relationship and wasn't honest because he was insecure. He had been through some stuff in a previous relationship and he just didn't want to be totally vulnerable and only have one woman. Uh, he didn't want to be out there like that again. But he eventually gave it up and uh, he said he didn't want to lose her. So that was ego to him. His ego was bruised and was trying to protect himself from getting hurt or being vulnerable. Her ego was bruised because she felt like she was above being cheated on. She felt like he upgraded with her and she kind of downsized financially uh, from where she you know, was used to dating. And so that's ego. And that's the number one thing that keeps us from communicating properly in a, in a mature way, in a loving way, is we do not want to manage that ego. We don't want to dim that ego. We don't want to be vulnerable. We want to make sure we, we get off what we need to get off, that we're heard, uh, that we're not, you know, no one is, is uh, upstaging us, owning the stage, and we're not taking the time to create a foundation of love, of understanding and patience. We're not being accountable. And, and that's the main thing. Now, a side note on that conversation, and they're going to come on the show eventually. A side note on that, I made a video recently about there are no shortcuts to gaining respect from the opposite sex. And I talked about men leading, leading in a relationship with money. This is how they're introducing themselves. This is the representative money, women leading with sex. Now, she dated these ballers, this couple, this woman and this, this couple, she dated these ballers before him. And I asked her, I said, but did you respect these guys? Because she told me they led with money. This is how they introduced themselves. They led with money. And I asked her, did you respect them though? She wouldn't answer me initially. So she began talking about something else, but I got back to it. She didn't answer. I waited, got back to it. And her, her dude said, he's asked you, you know, a question. He's like, I want to hear this. So she finally answered it. She was cornered. And she said, no, I didn't respect him. I said, so why didn't you respect him? She said, I didn't respect him because they let the money make them. And they didn't make the money. And they tried to buy me. And she said, they were able to buy me on a surface level, but they couldn't buy my loyalty. They couldn't buy my respect. I didn't respect them. She said, also, they didn't respect the money. They got it. She said she felt they got it too easy. Now I kind of pushed back on that because, you know, these guys, you know, they paid their dues, whether or not they got it coming from the hood or from the mud, you know, that still is not easy you know, an easy plight, getting to a large amount of money, you still got to make some sacrifices. You still, you know, got to get out there and do the work. Uh, so I pushed back on that, but I got, I got what she's saying. These guys didn't come from the hood. So she didn't respect it totally because they didn't come from the mud. They didn't have it rough. They came from money and was able to capitalize off of that. I get it, but I had to give some pushback on that. She said she respected her guy so much because although he didn't have the paper they had, he did have a considerable amount of paper, former street guy. Uh, he did have a considerable amount of paper, but he didn't lead with paper. She said she didn't even know how much you know money he had because that wasn't his representative. And he didn't lead that way. She said their first date was at a park. And she felt offended, like, damn, you would take me to a park? She's like, no picnic, no, no, it was plain Jane. And she felt offended because she was being, she was used to being treated a certain way. 
And uh, he didn't do that. He made her earn it. And then he revealed what he could offer financially. And she had, she said she had a different amount of respect, a different level of respect for him. And I said, well, look at it, 12 years in. I said, where are the mother guys at, though? But you're 12 years in with this guy, and he didn't lead with money. Just a side note. But, yeah, communication, toasters, we got to do better. I got to do better. Uh, like I said, I don't bet a 1000 on that. I got to do better. Uh, we're communicating. Um, but, man, that's that's the ultimate challenge, man. Man, it can... Proper communication can build communities, societies, corporations, lives. Improper communication can destroy it all. It, it really can. It can have it all burned down. And so, you know, on, on a conscious level, man, we have to start dealing with that for what it is. And when we do that, we have to start looking beyond consciousness and look at the subconscious and, and say, however I'm communicating with this person, that's how I see myself. That's how I communicate with myself. And that's what I'm projecting. Oh, yeah, man, you got to be accountable. You got to be accountable. And we have to increase our cognitive skills. Our cognitive skills have to increase. Have, we have to better those. And that's what. Uh, uh, being able to communicate with just the facts, just the facts, leave emotion out of it, just the facts. That's how you increase increase cognitive skills. That's part of uh, thinking, right? Reasoning and remembering. Think about that. Reflecting, recalling. That's the main thing I have a frustration with. When people recall and reflect something that's not accurate, I got to work on that, though. I got to work on being patient with those people. So remembering, thinking, how to think and how to reason. And if you look at any subculture within any community, they fail at those three things. They have no memory of, of history of themselves, of society, who they are. They don't remember why they're here, why they were created. They fail to reason. They can't reason. You can't reason with these people. There is no reasoning with these people. And they fail to really think. Really think and not be so reactive, so emotional, but really think, be logical. We work on those three things as a community. We're going to go a long way as a society. We're going to go a long way, but it has to be rooted in love. That has to be the foundation, man. God is love and we are perspectives. We are vessels. We are mirrors of God. So we got to be love. That's where it all starts. Love There's always toasters from me to you. Love. Peace.